Hello, my name is Denise Fittler, and I'm a member of the Career Experts Group. We are a select group of master career practitioners, personal branding strategists, and diversity, equity, inclusion consultants. We share one mission, to guide and support individuals at all stages of their career journeys, from new college graduates to C-suite executives. Our clients include neurodiverse workers, professionals of color, older workers, your early career professionals, career changers, and those returning to the workforce. Our own professional backgrounds are just as diverse, from high tech, to education, counseling, marketing, human resources, recruiting, and entrepreneurship, to name just a few. Today, I'm going to show you how to easily identify LinkedIn post topic ideas, and then how to create engaging post content. Why post on LinkedIn? Well, according to a LinkedIn article titled Five Compelling Reasons to Publish on LinkedIn, publishing on LinkedIn provides more value to connections who view your profile. Your connections are notified each time you publish a post on LinkedIn. Your network can share your LinkedIn post, which opens you up to a larger and previously unreachable audience. If your post is, happens to be featured in LinkedIn posts, your potential reach is exponentially increased. And publishing valuable content on LinkedIn, it positions you as an authority on the topic or a subject matter expert. So how do you know what to post about? Um, if you're like many people, um, you know, writer's block kicks in uh, or you just, you can't wrap your head around a, a topic and it can be overwhelming. Well, there are a number of different ways that you can get ideas for what to post on LinkedIn. The first choice is using Google Trends. With Google Trends, okay, you go into their, the website, which is just trends.google.com forward slash trends, uh, forward slash uh, question mark geo equals US. We're focusing on the US here. This is the screen that you will receive once you enter that. What it does is it shows you what the top searches, what are the top Google searches right now? Um, you can do it by geographic area. You can do it by interest. There's a lot of different information on here. You've got recently trending. You can do the year in review if you would like to look at everything from 2022. Or you can type in your own search terms. So let's type in SEO, all right, as a search term and see what happens. Now we'll see these are, this is the interest for the term SEO as far as searches. You can see it broken down by subregions, which, which um, areas of the country. So if you are, are writing and you're focusing on a geographic area, you can get an idea if this particular topic is a big topic in that area, in that geographic area. There are also related topics, other things that people are searching related to SEO. Now, what's even neater is now you can actually compare it to another search topic. So we looked for SEO. What happens if we look for search engine optimization? Let's see if I can spell this right. <laughs> All right. So now we'll look at search engine op optimization. You'd think it would be the same, but it's not. And it would help if I actually spelled it right. Okay, sorry about that. All right, so let's try that now. Let's see what happens. Okay, so you can see that spelling out search engine optimization is not something that people are Googling. All right, the numbers are quite a bit lower when you look at search engine optimization spelled out versus SEO, okay? How about if we try a, a new one? So we'll, we'll try chat GPT, which is another big thing and we'll be spending some time talking about this. So we'll look at chat GPT. Are people talking about this? Are they Googling it? Well. Since about uh, 
let's see, November 27th. Yes, people are Googling it and it just continues to, to go up. It trends higher. When you look at the re- interest by region, the center of the country, not as much. <laughs> okay. People are looking up chat GPT is one word, chat space GPT, open AI. What is chat GPT? So this again gives you some ideas. Now, let's compare that to something. All right. So Google, there's been a lot of talk about Google's AI uh, search option called BARD. So let's see what people, if people are thinking about or Googling BARD. Okay. Okay. Now, again, BARD is in red. Since this is a shorter time period. So now you can see they were talking about it, talking about it. Then Google talked about releasing it. And then Google held off on releasing and it's dropped down again. So again, this gives you some idea of what is happening. What are people interested in? And this can allow you, again, to to get some ideas on whether the topic or the word or or subject that you are thinking about writing about is something that is of interest to people right now, all right? This Google Trends can, can be a little confusing, okay? So there are two things to help you out, okay? First is uh, a video, a YouTube video, all right? You can see what's trending across and it teaches you the fundamentals of Google Trends. How does it work, okay? There is also a, um, an article that is an actual teaching lesson that helps you understand the data that you are looking at, okay? Another choice of things that you can, something that you can do to get topic ideas is to set up Google Alerts for yourself. Google Alerts are very easy to set up. You just go to www.google.com forward slash alerts, okay? Now, once you enter that information, this is the screen that you will see. You'll see I have a number of alerts set up, but say again that you are interested in uh, project management. So we'll type in project management, okay? Now, what is going to happen is you'll see an alert preview. And this gives you an idea of what you would see in your email alerts. You can click on now show options to fine tune this. So how often do you wanna be notified? I would recommend at most once a day. Sources, leave it as automatic. And this way it will pull from all areas, news, blogs, the web, video, books, discussions, finance. Link, uh, you can choose from, there are a number of different languages. Um, I'm leaving it in English. The region, you can set it if, if, you're, if you do work mainly in the United States. You can set this for the United States so that you're only getting information that would be relevant to you. Okay. Now, how many? You can say all results are only the best results. I would leave it as only the best results because otherwise... If you do all results, you tend to get some junk content um, from, you know, Joe Schmo's blog. <laughs> so keep it at only the best and then the email address where you would like to, to uh, receive it. So now I've clicked set alert. Now I can decide on, on receiving it. So I can click on this, this um, settings gear. And I can decide, do I want it delivered at a particular time during the day? If I have set up more than one alert, so if you noticed I had a number of alerts, I can decide to receive a separate email alert for each separate alert I set up, or I can decide that I want it in one single email and in digest form. Okay. This is, again, a great way to uh, get information and 
not have to go out and search for it yourself. So every day you'll get an email and it'll look something like this. And it has kind of like a title and then usually like two lines or a line and a half describing or from the article. So instead of having to open each of them and decide, is this something that I want, uh, that I'm finding interesting and that I want to read, you can just look here, say, okay, well, no, that's not, no, that's not how, I don't think that's very, uh, very interesting. Um, okay, what is business process management? So let's open this and see what it's, what the article's about. So I can read this. And if, if I find that this is very interesting, maybe they've got some good takeaways, all right? It's got some good process management symptoms, sim systems, excuse me. Um, it talks about, you know, integration centric versus human uh, centric versus document centric. So I look at this and I think, wow, this is really, this has a lot of great information. So now what I can do is I can just copy this URL. I can go to my, I can go to LinkedIn and I could start a post and I could be, you know, um, I just read an article titled, don't remember what it was titled. <laughs> Okay, here. So what is, ah, I apologize. This is not cooperating. All right. What is business process management? So we'll just copy that. Um, okay. And I want to include the link. So I'm going to copy the link. Um, this article is a, <laughs> a worthwhile read with information about, and our things was talking about, let's see, we had integration centric, people centric or human centric. So, uh, you know, uh, and basically you are, you, you're going to spell better than I do. <laughs> and you, again, you're sharing the link, but you're telling people a little bit about the article. You're wetting their appetite and getting them interested so that they actually will click the link and read it. So now you didn't have to come up with an idea. You are just sharing something that you found interesting and you easily found it because you set up Google alerts. Okay. Now, the next thing that we're going to talk about is, sorry, is how do you know what to post on? Again, you know, we, we've done the, we've done the, the trends, Google trends. We've done the Google alerts. Now, why don't we use LinkedIn itself to get some ideas on what to post? So if you go to LinkedIn, Okay. And in LinkedIn, up in the search bar, if you want to get an idea about, you know, what people are, are talking about, um, what are hot topics? Um, so again, let's, let's focus on, we'll do search engine option optimization. Just type it in and see what happens. Now, it, <laughs> sorry. Okay, now it doesn't look like there's a, oh my goodness. <laughs> so there's jobs, there's all these different things. Instead of clicking on one of these, let's just hit enter. And now there's groups, there's products, but one of the neat things, see here on the left, people who talk about search engine optimization. So I can click on this and I can see people who post. And these people, a lot of these people have, have a lot of followers, um, thousands and thousands of followers. And you can see that they have a hashtag. They talk about search engine optimization. So you may want to start following these people. You can get ideas 
on um, content from their posts. You can share their posts with your own comments and your own uh, feedback on the posts. Okay. So again, going to, you know, people who are talking about whatever the topic is, you can also look for groups. So let's just real quick, see if we get anything different. If we type in just SEO instead of search engine optimization. All right. So people who talk about SEO. So, wow, we've got 400, 482,000 followers for Neil Patel. Um, we've got 20,000 followers. Here's that Trevor again. So be, it, be aware if you are thinking about something that does have an acronym that you check it both ways, okay? So now we've seen, and we're now going to be following people who are really kind of the subject matter experts or the those that are posting the most about this topic. Now, what else can I do? Well, you can join, look at groups. So I can look at, so we've got SEO experts. It's got 156,000 members. So we can click on it. We can learn about this group. All right. So it's an association of search engine optimizers, internet marketing professionals, whose goal to drive business. All right. Well, that's actually sounds interesting and it may be very helpful. So you can click join. Once it gets approved, now you will start seeing posts from this group or from anyone in this group higher up in your post feed so that you can start commenting, you can start interacting, subsequently send connection requests to people who are in a similar type role or industry. The other neat thing is when you go into these groups, it tells you how many people in that group went to the same college you have listed, how many in that group are located in the, the general area that you're in, how many are in the same industry. Then there are also related groups as well. All right. The other thing that you can do, so we're going to go backwards here. And instead of groups, we're going to go to people. Okay. Um, you know, are there, there key people are in the industry or actually, you know what, let's say you are interested. You really want to work for, um, well, we won't go with Google and them because they're all laying off right now, but um, let's just type in marketing and see what we get. Or come and we'll go into companies. So if I go to companies instead, all right, I've got um, marketing week. Okay. So hmm, we've got a staffing company. We've got uh, Rome, Mumbai, Cambridge, London, London. All right, let's just go to this marketing week. And I can go to people and I can see people that are working at Marketing Week. So maybe I really want to work at Marketing Week. I can look at the people. I can see where they live, where they studied, um, what they do. All right. So maybe I type in CEO and see if there's a CEO at this company. All right. We have a CMO. So I might want to look at his account his LinkedIn profile, and I might want to scroll to the bottom and see what companies is he following? What groups is he in? All right. If he's in groups that make sense for me, if I'm really interested in this company, I want to start following the company. I want to start following this high level person. And I want to look at the groups they're part of, and maybe I want to join the same groups. Because then, again, if you start posting in those groups, then this key person is going to start seeing your name. It's all about name recognition. It's all about networking. All right. And you can also, when we type in SEO, you can also look for events. There could be training events. There could be networking events. There may be tons of events. Just be very careful when you're looking at events and groups that you are picking ones, ones for the right country. Okay. Now, when in LinkedIn, you go to all this trouble, 
you find these ideas for writing these posts, what you want to make sure that people are actually seeing your post on LinkedIn. So one of the things, if you are going to post, you want to make sure that you have creator mode set on. So in your resources, on, when you go into your profile under resources, there are a number of different resources, one of which should be creator mode. If you turn creator mode on, it allows you to pick five, up to five hashtags related to the topics that you'll be posting on. The importance of this and making sure that you pick hashtags that are, um, you know, are being followed by a lot of people is this is your way of connecting with people, getting your post post to connect with people who are not in your network. Okay. Because if you post, you don't have these hashtags, then only the people in your network are going to potentially see it. If you have creator mode set and you've got your hashtags identified and you make sure that you write or include these hashtags at the end of every post, this means that anybody who is following that hashtag will see your post, even if they're not part of your network. Now, how do you figure out which, um, which hashtags to use? Because like for me, for example, you know, you've got resume, you've got resumes, you've got career or you've got careers. So if you want to see how many followers a particular hashtag has, just go up to search, put, put in hashtag and we'll say career. All right. So, so in the drop down, we've got career. So if I click on that. It's all, it's got 809,964. But if I type hashtag careers, it's got 22 million. So make sure, again, that when you are picking your hashtags, you pick hashtags that have the larger following. All right. So with Post. So we've talked about getting ideas. Now, how do we how do we write our posts? Maybe you're got writer's block or you're overwhelmed or anything. First off, one of the things that I know you've all heard about is chat GPT. Okay. Now with chat GPT, chat GPT is a large language mo model. It's a chatbot that has the ability to interact in conversational dialogue from a form and provide responses. So large language models, they perform the task of predicting the next word in a series of words, and then it uses reinforcement learning with human feedback as an additional layer of training. So it uses human feedback to help chat GPT learn the ability to follow direction, generate responses that are really satisfactory. So, you know, what can you use ChatGPT for? Well, its writing capabilities are, are so exciting. Um, it can help you with essays, resumes, poems, social media posts, marketing copy, emails, um, fiction, nonfiction stories, maybe writing or checking computer code, or even solving tricky math problems. I've even seen some people use it to write music um, and others are using it to translate their existing content into multiple languages. So you will need to set up an account on ChatGPT. Now, everybody says, okay, it's ChatGPT and they start typing that in. No, the actual URL is chat.openai.com forward slash chat, okay? Um, to set up the login, you're going to go to, and this is in the presentation, you're going to go to chat.openai.com forward slash auth, which is A-U-T-H, forward slash login. So once you're in and you set up your account, you can go back in anytime you want. To set up the account, there's no cost to set up the account. However, 
chat GPT has rolled out an upgrade uh, or a plus upgrade. The plus upgrade is $20 a month. The plus upgrade does a couple things. It gets you, the, it gets you uh, in all the time. Because one of the things you'll find is setting up an account or even logging in with a free account. So many times you'll type it in and a screen will pop up saying, we're at capacity, leave your email and we'll get back to you. Don't leave your email. Just keep hitting refresh on your screen. You do that a couple of times, it'll usually let you in, okay? It's just waiting for it opening, so just keep hitting refresh. But if you've got the paid version, it automatically gets you in even if there's, even if it's the demand is full. But it's got faster response speed um, and you know new features you get faster. There are some, some uh, concerns or questions, but learning how to use this and use it effectively can be very, very helpful, okay? Now, there's a really great um, kind of tutorial, and my apologies here, it's not opening. Um, the, this tutorial, is by Ruben Hasid. And it's actually very helpful. You can go through and he pretty much talks you through how to, in this, this uh, slideshow on how to, to use ChatGPT effectively. All right. So what I'm going to do uh, real quick now is walk you through an example of using chat GPT. So I'm gonna go to chat GPT. And the first thing I'm gonna type in is, what are the most popular hashtags? Down here, I'm gonna type, what are the most popular hashtags on LinkedIn right now? And I hit enter, all right? Oh, it's not liking me. Okay, let's see. I may have to log back in. <laughs> Let's try it again. See, again, because I have the free, ver free version, sometimes it will take a lot longer. Okay, so here, based on the provided search results, the most popular hashtags on LinkedIn right now are this, okay? And it even has... Uh, tells you where it's getting certain information from so that you can link to those, those articles. Okay. Now let's say, hmm, okay, so it's talking about careers. Hmm, so maybe I want to maybe I want to write an article on um, career advancement. So now I'm gonna I'm gonna narrow this down a little further and <laughs> and not kill my computer in the process. Um, so let's say we ask it to write a short article on career development that presents ideas for things to do to advance your career. Okay. So let's see what it says now. All right. So now it's going to talk to me about what is career development? And it's going to give me some ideas on what I can do to maybe advance my career. Right? This is all great information. But be aware of this. This is pulling information from the internet. This is not in your voice. So you, this is meant to be um, just uh, kind of an idea starter. So keep all of that in mind when you are using this tool, okay? So now it just gave me great information. Now I want to see, all right, well, career development for, uh, you know, somebody maybe at a supervisory level might be different than somebody moving, trying to move into a leadership role. So are there different career development steps if you're trying to move into leadership? Okay. Now it talks about the different steps, the different things. This is actually fairly new. This didn't do this earlier, even earlier today. It didn't include these references of where it's getting the information. 
it would just say, according to an article, and it never told you. This is brand new today that it is giving you this information. Okay. So now I know that it is a little different for um, uh, a leader for, for development. So are the skills, are there special skills um, for leadership roles? Okay. So now it's telling me these skills are important for people in leadership. And again, it's now including the references. And to make it even a little bit more impressive, well, it's going to keep going. So while it's doing that, you can now even work on presentation, uh, things like that. So I'll let this finish running to get all the information, all the things that it comes up with. All right. So now I can take it even further and I'm going to say, create a table showing the top 10 executive leadership skills needed for today and rank them. Okay. So it's again, based on the web searches, it's got the 10 and it's ranking them. Okay. I did ask it to do it in a table. It obviously it did not, did not do the table. So it can't do tables or it most times cannot do tables. It can't do charts. It can't do graphs, but it is giving you a lot of really great information that you can use to kind of work forward and really come up with some incredible ideas and content for really crafting impactful blogs, posts, things that are going to help you interact and grow your audience, grow your name recognition, grow your reputation as a subject matter expert, okay? So back to the presentation. So again, here's the link to the tutorial. Here's the link to uh, access chat GPT. Now, there are some things that you do need to keep in mind if you are using chat GPT. ChatGPT only has limited knowledge of anything for anything after 2021. Okay. So you may not be getting the most up to date information. You can't take the information that you get as 100% fact. You do still need to fact check because there is the potential for it to provide inaccurate or, or misinformed answers. It's trained through a method, method of trial and error. And it being, it's only as accurate as the data and the algorithm they're based on. And again, it all depends on what you ask and how you asked it. It also can identify copyrighted information or potentially intellectual property. So you want to make sure that you're not breaking any laws, you're not being unethical in your use of the information that's been created. And remember that most of the time, so if, if six different people were logged in and asked the same question, all six are going to get the same answer. So if you share exactly word for word what you get and somebody else does, you have just totally destroyed your reputation. You have now become that person who cheats, who takes information that others created. That is, you know, you're no longer the subject matter expert. Whereas if you take the information and you craft it yourself, you use it for ideation, content creation ideas, and as a starting point, then you rework it using your brand, your, your tone, your, the way you speak, all right? Otherwise, you know, if you just use what they give you, in a lot of cases, it's generic. Um, you know, some people are saying, oh, use it for a resume and a cover letter. All right, that's great. It's generic information. There's nothing specific about you. There's nothing that talks about your specific accomplishments. So yes, you can use it as a starting point and to gather ideas, but you are going to want to, whether it's a resume, whether it's an article, you want to make sure that you are crafting it in your own voice and um, selling you know, your knowledge, your subject matter expertise, right? So there are other some other content creation platforms 
out there. Um, RyRob is a free keyword search tool, which it's it's actually very easy, interesting. It lets you know what the top keywords that are being searched. Um, Simplified is a content and blog creator. Smart Copy is a content generator. Um, Sassbook is a content text generator. And Quillbot is an AI writer and paraphrasing tool. Some of these are completely free. Some have free versions and paid versions. But again, this gives you some idea of some other things that are out there, you know, in addition to chat GPT. All right. Now, wrap up. We're going to wrap this up here. When you are posting, you need to be consistent on social media, content, topics, personal brand, hashtags. You want to try and post on a consistent basis. So a minimum of, say, three times a week is, is most effective. And try and post, um, you know, the same days each week, around the same time each week, so that people start to anticipate uh, and get excited about receiving those posts. You want to absolutely be aware of plagiarism and copywriting. Make sure you're staying up to date on the topics that your audience is interested in and what they're posting about. Use top hashtags to drive engagement. Respond to people when they engage with you with your uh, posts and they comment on your posts. Absolutely engage back with them. Respond to their posts. That also helps drive your LinkedIn algorithm score and it helps it drive your engagement. Join groups, actively participate in those groups with the group members, the posts, and then above all else, stay true to your personal brand in all social media activities. I hope this uh, webinar has been helpful and at least given you a starting point uh, to become an active LinkedIn poster. And uh, it has this webinar is presented by the Career Experts Group. So for a wealth of career-focused information, insights, and inspiration, you can visit our website. You can also check out our monthly newsletters. You can subscribe to get the latest information on hot topics and trends directly in your email each month from our, our newsletter. You, if you have a question, if you have a career-related question, you can submit it to our Ask the Experts. And the, uh, the appropriate expert will get back right back to you and your email. So thank you so much for your time. And I hope you all have a wonderful day. Thank you very much.